and welcome to another video from Line Parallelogram and this time we're going to be following on from the previous tutorial which was about using sockets to communicate between two Linux machines but this time we're going to use the same socket server but instead of a Python client we're going to use a Windows C Sharp client before we get on to writing the client we're firstly going to recap the server we wrote in the last video so this will simply import the libraries we need. This will create an instance of socket. Then we define our port number. We say how many, the max number of connections we're going to allow. We then start the server here. Then we accept the incoming connection. Then here we just set up the pin seven so we can turn the little LED on. This will just make it easier to see where a new message comes in. And then here, we'll just get the incoming message and then if the message isn't nothing then we'll turn the LED on for five seconds then turn it off again. So let's go on with the client. So for this version of the socket client you will need a Windows machine and also the program Visual Studio. I'm using the version 2015 if you don't have this however I'll leave a link in the description to where you can download it once it's loaded, you want to make a new project. Then you need to check you're on Visual C Sharp and then on Windows. You want to make sure you've got selected a Windows Forms application and then call it something like Socket Client and then just press Create. Once your project is made, you should get something that looks like this. It's just a very simple window that says Form 1 at the top. First of all, we're going to add some components. The first one is a tool strip. And that will just dock to the top of your screen there. Then on there, you're going to want three buttons. We will change those pictures later. We also want three text boxes. And finally, a list box. Next, we want to organize our widgets. So make your window a little bit bigger so we can fit everything on. And then we can put this text box in the corner over there. Maybe make it a little bit longer. Put this one on the same row as it and put it there. And then this underneath them both about there. Then we want to put this list box at the bottom. Make it quite big. Now we want some labels. So here you're going to put IP slash host name because that will be where you write your IP address or your host name that you're going to connect to and then we need a, another label and this time you're going to make it say port put that next to that text box there the final label we want is to say message because that's where we're going to put our message. The next thing we need to do is change this thing that says list box one. So click on the items in the property and put output. Oops. next thing we need to do is change these icons. Now I've loaded a few icons into this folder. So I've got the connect icon, the send icon and the close icon. First button I'm going to do is connect. Then we want the send icon. There we go. And finally the close icon to close the connection. 
The last thing we're going to do on the design is change the icon of the form. So I'm going to use this icon and the text on the form. I'm going to write socket client. Once you've added all your widgets, your window should look something like this. I'll put all of these icons on GitHub so you can download and use them if you wish. The next thing you need to do is double click on the top of your window, which will bring up this screen. You then want to scroll to the top and find all of these using lines. You then want to write at the bottom two more using lines. So you want using system.net and then a semicolon and then you want using oops using system dot net dot sockets again don't forget your semicolon the next thing you need to do is define a couple of variables in the public partial class here you want to define int port number the string message another int which is byte count and then the network stream stream and that's called stream and then the final variable you need is byte and then open brackets close brackets send data so now you want to return to your design window but this time you want to double click on your connect button that will bring up this little subroutine here which will run whenever you press the button you in here you want to write if and then open brackets and then an explanation mark say if not and then you want to write int dot try phrase then some more open brackets text box and then we need to find out what number our port number is so we go back to our design window again and that's text box one and then put text box one in there dot text and then we also want to write out port and then on the end of here, we need to put our curly brackets and press enter. In here, we want to write message box, there we go, dot show. And then in here, port number not valid. And then make sure you put your semicolon in there. And then we're also going to do list box one. dot items dot add and then we want to put port number invalid and then again your semicolon on there so before we do the next bit we need to go back up to our variable list and make our final variable called client and this is a TCP client, so TCP client, client, and then a colon. Then we can go back to our if statement and press enter. There we need to write try and then our curly brackets. In here we need to write client equals new TCP client and then we need to write the text box three dot text and then combine it with the port number that we have defined. Then again a semicolon on the end as always. Then if we check that the IP or hostname box is indeed text box 3, which it is. Then we can put another message box that says, 
connection made. And then we also want to add to our output box, which is called list box one dot items dot add made connection with and then put plus and then you want text box three dot text. This will show you the text that says made connection with and then the IP address or host name that you've added. So underneath this we need to write the catch for the try. Again your curly brackets and the exception we want to catch for is system.net.sockets dot socket exception and in here you want to just simply write message box dot show connection failed and then again we want to add it to our output box And and then our colon on the end, as always. Once you've done that, you're going to need to return to the designer again and double click on your send button. In here, you need to write try and then open brackets. In the brackets, you need to write message equals text box two or whatever your text number is dot text and then a semicolon then you need the byte count and equals encoding dot a s c i i dot get byte count and then open brackets message and then a semicolon on the end as always Next, you need to make the send data variable equal to new byte oops, and then open square brackets byte count oops, and then a semicolon on the end of that. Next thing you need is the send data variable again. Equals encoding dot ASCII -I again, but this time get bytes. And then open brackets, put your message in there again. And then as always, a semicolon on there. The next thing you need to do is the stream. Make that equal to client dot get stream. Oh, it's better. Next, you need stream dot write, and then the send data. And then zero, and finally send data dot length, and then close your brackets. Then you want to write to the output window list box one dot items dot add something like sent data. And then we add the message on there. Like so now we need to add a catch for our try. So we need to write catch and in brackets write system dot null 
reference exception. And then our curly brackets. In here, just simply write message box dot show and then connection not installized. Then we want to add that to our output, so list box one dot items dot add and then in brackets failed to send data semicolon oops got an A in there not right next we're going to need to return to our designer for the final time and click on the close. In here you want to write stream.close stream.close and then open bracket close bracket and then client.close and then add to our output window connection terminated. So now we have finished writing the code, we are ready to run. But first I'm just going to change the icon of the program to an icon I loaded earlier. And now we have to go to our server and open the socket server program. Then you want to run that, and just like before, we get a window like this. It says server started at your host name on port the port you chose. So now we can go back to our program on Windows. We want to run this, and you should get your window that looks just like it did in the designer. And here we can put the IP or host name. And then the port, I did 8000. And then we can press our little connection button there. That says a connection made. And then we've got that in the output window. Now if we go back to our Raspberry Pi here, it says new connection made. That's just what we expect. Then we go back to this again. And we can put in a message and send it. Then if we look at our LED, that has lit up and we should also see that we get the message in over here as well. We can send a new message and that will come up as well. We can send as many messages as we want. And then we can terminate it by pressing this and you'll see that this just stops because it hasn't got anything to receive and our program is terminated connection terminated so that's it from this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did leave a like subscribe and i will leave a link in the description to all the code from this video that will be on github as well as the code from the previous video and where to download the software that i used Thanks for watching.